Hello there, in this video, we're going to learn some other points about PLCs, which are scan cycle, data types, and addressing. Then, we'll do a simple industrial circuit with PLC. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, if you remember, in the previous video, I used my processor, Mycologix 1500 and its connected switch, to turn on a lamp, and this was the processor program. Now, let me explain how a PLC, executes its program. When a PLC is in run mode, stores the state of this digital input and also all other connected inputs such as analog inputs, where is called input image memory. Then, PLC processor continually solves user logic program, based on current input image memory. Here, the output will be off, unless the first input digital is was activated, on the input image memory. Note that, during program execution, the processor does not change its real outputs, instead, it updates its output image memory, based on solution of the user logic program. Finally, when the PLC processor reaches the end of the user program, it activates or deactivates all its real outputs, according to the output image memory. After this step, the PLC processor does some other tasks, such as communication and housekeeping, then reads and stores all input status on the input image memory, in order to execute the user program for the second time. It does so over and over until the time, that the PLC is taken offline, or is shut down manually. This cycle is called the scan cycle, which takes about 5 to 10 milliseconds, depending on the processor type, and program size. We've seen how a program is executed by the PLC processor. In an industrial process, the user program needs to know the equipment and signal status. So, how a PLC stores these data in its memory? As you know, bit is the smallest unit to storage two states, 0, false, or 1, true. A digital input only has two states. So it needs one bit on the PLC memory to store a digital input status. 0 when input is inactive and 1 when input is active. If we have 8 bits, it's called a byte. One byte can store 256 states. See this table. We can store 0 with 8 zeros. 1 with 7 zeros plus 1, and similarly 2, 3, to 255. There are lots of standards to save data such as numbers, times, dates which will be told later. For example, let me use the 7th bit to store the number sign. 0 for positive and 1 for negative numbers. So based on this table, I can store negative numbers too. These numbers can be an electrical signal value or some industrial parameters such as motor speed or water level. If we need more precision, we can have 65,536 states with 2 bytes, which are called a word. So, based on the defined standard and number of bits, different data types can be stored in the PLC memory, like Boolean data which have only 2 states, integer numbers, dates, and other required data. All right, if you remember, we had connected a switch and lamp respectively to PLC input and output and used their address in the program. Now, we're going to see how we can address to a specified input or output. First, let's start with the first digital output address. Letter O indicates the address is for a PLC output. Then the file number is determined. For output image memory, this number is zero and can be omitted. The colon is a separator. This zero indicates the element or slot number, which holds the actual output. The slot number can range from slot 0 to a maximum number of 30. My system has three modules and their slot numbers are 0, 1, and 2. 
I'm going to refer to the first digital output of my CPU, which its slot number is 0. The next number indicates the word number. As mentioned earlier, a word has 16 bits, and my CPU has only 12 digital outputs. So, one word can store all output status, so each bit of this word, from bit 0 to bit 11, will store all digital output status respectively. By default, the word number of each slot, starts from 0. After the forward slash, the bit number of the word, or the terminal number of the I.O. module, is determined. In Micrologix 1500, I have 12 output terminals. Hence, 0 means terminal O0 which is the first digital output, and 3 refers to this terminal, O3. Similarly, we can address to PLC inputs. Letter I, indicates the address is for a PLC input. Its file number is 1. It can be omitted during input addressing. I want to use my digital inputs of my CPU. Its slot number is 0. Like the previous slide, my CPU has 12 digital inputs, which its word number is 0. Then I can refer to each digital inputs with a number from 0 to 11. Now, let's see another example of input addressing, its first part doesn't need to change. Number 2 refers to this analog input module. This module supports four analog inputs channel, which each channel use a word to store its input signal. Here, I referred to the third channel which its number is 2. Then, I can refer to each bit of the selected word. Note that, if we don't determine the bit number, it means we refer to the number which is stored in the selected word. Alright, let's do a simple exercise. Here is a simple industrial circuit to turn on off a three-phase motor. It can be divided into two parts. The control circuit and the power circuit. As you see, when the start push button is pressed, the K contactor is powered and closes its normally open contacts. Then, the motor will remain on, until the stop push button is pressed. Now, we're going to see, how a PLC can turn on a three-phase motor. Pay attention, PLCs can turn on small devices like signal lamps or contactors, but they don't have enough power to turn on three-phase motors. So, like the previous slide, PLC has to use a contactor, which its contacts were used to turn on the three-phase motor in the power circuit. Alright, I want to load this program on my PLC. This program is similar to the circuit, which has been explained in the previous slide. In this program, two digital input and one digital output have been used. Alright, let's write the PLC program in Arslogix 500. Well, let me select my CPU which is Micrologix 1500. As we mentioned in the previous video, here, we can see and change some properties of our controller. Let me click on I.O. configuration to configure my hardware. My CPU is in slot 0, and also I'm using two analog input modules in which their slot numbers are 1 and 2. Here, we can see the input-output image memories. For example, this table shows the output image memory. 
This zero refers to my CPU which its slot number is zero. Then, this zero select the word number. As you know, each word has 16 bits. Here, you can see a list of instructions that can be used for PLC programming. Let me write my program. This instruction creates a new rung. Then, I enter a normally close contact, I also need a branch. Now, I use arrow keys to select where a normally open contact must be inserted. Again, I click on the examine on symbol, to place a normally open contact as holding contact. Finally, click on the energize output symbol. Now, let me use the first digital input for this contact. So, its address starts with the letter I. Its file number is 1. It's not necessary to write it. Then I must determine the slot, word, and bit number. This contact will work like a stop push button. Now, I want to use the next digital input to activate this contact in my program. Let me show you another way in input output addressing. After I and slot number, I can enter the overall bit number, instead of entering the word and its bit number. Open input image table. For each slot number, in its first word, there are 16 bits with numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 to 15. Also, the next word has 16 bits. But their overall bit numbers are 16, 17, 18 to 31. For example, we can refer to this digital input with its word and bit numbers which respectively are 2 and 4. Or just use its overall bit number which is 36. Let me use this address to see its result in my program. Pay attention, for the next slot number, the overall bit number will start from zero. Well, let me use the second digital input to activate this contact. This contact will work like start push button. Alright, similarly we can assign an output address to this energize output instruction. Let me show you another way. Open the output image table. Here, we can select the first digital output, define a symbol, and then, drag and drop it on the energize output instruction. Also, I need a contact of this output, as the holding contact. So, I use this output address for this contact too. Now, let's verify the project and files, to ensure there isn't any error in the program. As you see, the control circuit on the left side and the PLC program on the right side are the same. On the left side, push buttons are activated by hand pressure, but on the right side, contacts work based on the PLC inputs. Now, let me transfer the program to my PLC. I need to use Arslink software, which has been explained in the first video. Well, my CPU is detected. Now, let's transfer the PLC program. As you know, I must change the CPU mod to PROG before downloading. Also, I must save it on my computer.
my CPU is in program mode, let me change it to run mode. Ok, let me sort my computer screen to have a better view. As you see, on the left side, I can turn a three phase motor with the start push button. Similarly, I can turn on the first digital output by activating the start contact. As you see, my CPU turned on a green lamp. Also, it can turn on a contactor too instead of the green lamp. Similarly, I can stop the motor, and turn off the green lamp, respectively with the stop push button, and activating the stop contact. In the next video, we'll see, how we can test a program without any PLC. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.